It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160, and WCCSradio.com. Good morning to you. All this month, during the month of October, it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We've been focusing upon that topic and from a number of different angles. And today, this promises to be very, very interesting. Welcoming to the studio this morning, Deb Geisel uh, and uh, Chrissy Kemmerer joining us this morning. Deb, you're the new nurse navigator, right? Yes. I went the wrong direction there. (laughs) You're over there to my left. Uh, You're the nurse navigator. Yes. Uh, and, and Chrissy, you are running the high risk yes. uh, mm-hmm. breast cancer detection team yep. at the Comprehensive Breast Center. I am, yes. Well, it's going to be good to talk with both of you about this. Um, uh, Deb, as, as the nurse navigator, I, I just find the position uh, to be uh, intriguing uh, because uh, you really, uh, you're the go-to person. You're, you're the quarterback. When someone comes in uh, and is is starting that journey. Yes. Um, so when a lady comes in and is initially diagnosed, um, Ms. Dr. Margaret Clark is the one that will give her the pathology results, and then she'll talk with the patient and kind of explain the process, and then she turns her over to me. Mm-hmm. So from that point on, it's my job to make sure that the la- that our ladies get the proper referrals to whether it's medical oncology or radiation oncology, I set them up with a surgeon and basically trying to navigate their process for the next five years. And, you know, when they're initially diagnosed, it's not just making the referrals, it's giving them the support and the reassurance that this is a team effort and we're not going anywhere and we're going to make sure that they're taken care of the entire way. You probably get them when they are their most vulnerable, don't you? Yes, when we've absolutely rocked their world. And it's just, you just want to reach to the phone and just give them a hug and let, let them know that we've got you. Yeah, yeah. So. And then that initial meeting um, would be so key to them, uh, giving them the confidence to, to face whatever the battle is, because that battle can be long and can be tedious and can be dangerous. Um, or in, in other cases, it, it might be something that is, is much easier for them. And, and I, I know that you want it to be as easy as possible. You want, to, you want it to be as easy as possible because they're just trying to process everything. And everybody's journey is so different, and you just have to allow them the space to do that but still be doing the behind-the-scenes stuff to make sure that they're getting the care that they need. Yeah, yeah. So. I want to talk more with you in a couple of moments, but let's meet Chrissy this morning as well. Uh, the high-risk breast detection, uh, breast cancer detection program at the Comprehensive Breast Center, uh, that's where, where you are so much involved. Uh, and, and defining what high-risk is, you know, we had Dr. Clark with us last week talking mm-hmm. a little bit about that. Um, uh, it, it really is, it's a, it's a puzzle, isn't it? That you have to put together. Oh, for sure. Um, so we have to look at a lot of different factors when we're determining someone who's high risk, uh, things such as like family history, um, density of their breast tissue on mammogram, any history of hormone replacement therapy, all these different factors. And like you said, it is a puzzle piece. Luckily we have a tool that we use. It's called the Tyracusic breast cancer risk assessment score. So we put all these factors into that tool and it gives us a calculation basically of the lifetime risk of a patient developing breast cancer up to age 85. Um, So if the patient comes out as greater than 20% risk, that's when we start them in our high risk screening program. And and, and that was so interesting and fascinating to listen to Dr. Clark last week explaining that, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, that it really, it's it's a science and it's an art at the same time, isn't Mm -hmm. it? Yes, for sure. Yeah, yeah. When when that high risk um, program kicks in, uh, and you're able to assess somebody as being uh, at high risk, then are there certain protocols you follow in order to start them out on their journey? Um, I would assume that not everything is the same for every woman. Correct. So for patients, if we find them to be high risk at an age less than thirty. It is a little bit different because they have denser breast tissue on mammograms, so we won't go right ahead into these annual screening mammograms. But we will typically get a baseline breast MRI around age 25, and then once they reach 30, um, we'll start with the uh, mammograms and MRIs every six months alternating. Mm -hmm. For other patients who are high risk, we will typically start right away with the mammograms and MRIs followed by clinical breast exams. So it is a little different based on, you know, age of the patient, sure. uh, family history, everything like that. And so. as Dr. Clark was telling us, uh, breast density 
uh, mm-hmm. is a big factor that plays a role in what you do as yes, well. Yes, for sure. So for patients with a density, so there's densities ranging from one to four, and I'm sure he talked about this too, but mm-hmm. density three and four, it's harder to see abnormalities on mammogram. Mm-hmm. So that's why MRI is really important because it looks at the breast differently so that we can sometimes catch things that wouldn't be caught on mammogram. And those levels change as a woman ages. Correct. Yeah. So a lot of times in our older patients, they'll have lower density breasts than maybe they did when they were 30. Mm-hmm. But. Yeah. Yeah. Deb, let's, let's return to, to your topic as well here this morning and talk a little bit more about that journey. Um, we, we, know that when you first meet them, uh, as we said, uh, that's that's a really, really difficult time uh, for folks. As they make their way through the various uh, steps that uh, one would go through, um, I'm just, you know, projecting that uh, if it were me and I were in your position, I, I would be able to see uh, that at some point uh, – this is this this stage is kicking in now that this person has recognized that okay I can do this, mm-hmm. uh, and I would assume that's different for every woman, isn't it? It is very different for every woman. I've been um, working as a nurse in this capacity for over twenty years, and I can tell you that when I see a woman come into the office initially, you either have the warrior where we're going to beat this, or you have the lady that is a complete and utter mess, mm-hmm. and you just watch them walk this journey, and they become these amazingly strong women. Just it's a privilege to be a small part of their journey yeah. and just to watch them sounds ins- survive. Sounds inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and, and that warrior mentality, um, you know, a lot of that just has to do with, well, this is my personality. I mm-hmm. meet things head on, uh, and this is the way I approach things. You know, maybe they've been an athlete in the past, or, or maybe they've been in a particularly difficult life circumstance, something that has, has toughened them up for the journey. Um, whereas there are women who, you know, they've never had any health concern in their life. And mm-hmm. it's, it's just not a part of what they've, they have in their experiential background. Yeah, and you see all ranges of women. The, yeah. Whether the ones that are, you also see the ones that are very heavy with their faith and they're going to get through this and survive. It's, mm-hmm. it's an amazing thing to watch. As a woman goes through a lumpectomy as opposed to a total mastectomy, uh, of course, uh, their their journeys are, are different. The paths that they go down are, are quite different as well. I think folks probably would be surprised because you said you, you'll go with them five years out from their, from their initial diagnosis, that uh, uh, it is that long that you, you stay with them and you're there for them all the way through that process. Yes, because within the first five years is a woman's highest chance for reoccurrence. So we keep a very close eye on them in those five years with follow-up, not only with surgery, but with medical oncology and just doing routine mammograms. And like Chrissy said, if they have a higher breast density and we identify that they'll get alternating MRIs so we do keep very close tabs on our ladies it's it's really fascinating to watch the way that both of you um, have found roles within the comprehensive breast center at IRMC Uh, and I would guess that 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 long-term relationship that you form with all of the patients um, Mm -hmm. uh, is is as meaningful to you as it is to them it is they're all my family (laughs) I love them all very much so Yeah, tremendous. Okay, so we want to get to the Mammoglam event because it's coming up on Monday. Yes. Uh, and uh, this is uh, something that is extremely important. I've been telling uh, women, I said uh, quite often, I'm, I've said over the last couple of weeks, you know, even if you're not due for a mammogram, even uh, if you uh, aren't eligible for a mammogram right now, you probably know somebody that has not had her mammogram for quite some time or has never had a mammogram. Take them by the hand and bring them with you Monday night. Exactly. Be a good idea, would it not? It would be. And it's also a good idea to come because not only is it for the mammogram, but you can meet the entire team. Like we'll have Chrissy and myself and the breast surgeons will be on hand. Um, I believe the social worker comes along, the dietician. So you get to meet the entire team, even the radiologist, Dr. Margaret Clark will be there. Yeah. Yeah. Chrissy, I would assume that there are a lot of women who don't even know that they're at high risk of breast cancer. Yeah. And so I think that's changing a little bit now. We're seeing a lot more people, primary care physicians, um, gynecologists, who are asking these questions more, and more people Mm -hmm. are becoming aware, so then they are getting sent to us. So that's obviously a great thing. We want to catch these breast cancers early. Um, So, yeah, I would say a lot of people still don't know, but I think that is improving. Yeah, yeah. And and women are becoming very active uh, in, in 
the attack on breast cancer too. They're they're joining the fight even before it's a fight, aren't they? Yes, yes, definitely. I think a lot of people are starting to get their mammograms at you know younger ages because we're finding them to be high risk. So mm-hmm. the attack is definitely there. Yeah. But. Now both of you have on your IRMC Comprehensive Breast Center T-shirts today. No, show our Facebook listeners or, or viewers there. There you go. There you go. They're both wearing their T-shirts. Uh, they're for the Love of Life 5K. Yes. Yeah. We always have a team for the Love of Life um, 5K. I think that started when Dr. Billamori and I did it about five years ago, just the oh, yeah. two of us, and then we decided to open it up and get a team. So it's a beautiful cause. If you haven't signed up, I would encourage you to do so. It's going to be great weather. We had Heather Reed here yesterday talking about it. It's coming up on Saturday. Registration begins, I believe, at 8, uh, and then you're off and running at 9 or walking. Mm-hmm. Uh, for and if, you're, if you're not a runner, you want to just walk in the event, that's uh, certainly something you could do as well. Uh, so the team will be there, huh? The team will be there. <laughs> yep. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, so two things. Uh, The Love of Life 5K is coming up on Saturday, and then Monday from 4 to 6 is the Mammoglam event at the Women's Imaging Center. You can meet the Breast Center team, including these ladies. Enjoy a mocktail. That's a non-alcoholic drink. Uh, Some appetizers. uh, Get a chair massage, a mini makeover. Uh, You can schedule, or you can actually get a mammogram on that day. You've got some giveaways, and everybody gets the chance to win a Ninja Creamy. What is a Ninja Creamy? You can basically put anything in it and it makes ice cream. So Really? Yes, I'm all about that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Lasagna? I mean <laughs> Sure, sure. <laughs> Lasagna ice cream, I'm going for it. Uh, if you want to go to Mammoglam, ladies, here you go. Uh, go to irmc.org slash twenty twenty four and there's a QR code, you can scan that, or you could just give a call to three five seven seven one eight eight Mammoglam from four to six PM. Women's Imaging Center at IRMC, just, you know, where the helicopter pad is. It's directly across from there and they're entering into the building. Thanks so much to both of you for coming in and visiting with us today. We appreciate Thank it. You. Thank, Thank you. you. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM, AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com. 25 minutes after 8 o'clock, Josh from the WCCS Newsroom in just a moment. Right now, Boomer Sports.